Well, for more insights now into autonomous driving, I'm joined by a Skype by Dan Albert. He's the author of Are We There Yet? The American Automobile Past, Present and Driverless. Welcome to the show. Thank you. So what are you expecting from this evening's AI day from Tesla? I think what we'll see is a lot of talk about Dojo, which is one of Elon Musk's great uh, names for things. This is a supercomputer project that Tesla says they have in mind. It's supposed to be twice as fast as the fastest in the world, 10 times faster than anything in China. And it's all for uh, full self-driving, what they call uh, autonomous vehicles, uh, to process all of the information that comes in. Now, it's interesting because Elon Musk is known for voicing his concerns about the dangers of AI, saying that humans risk being overtaken by artificial intelligence within the next five years. Yet here we are with Tesla hosting an AI day. So what is Musk's goal overall with this event? I think it's interesting when he does talk about, you know, sort of AI Arm Armageddon. I think that's actually um, part of the whole promotion of AI by Musk. He wants us to think, wow, that's really incredible. That could happen and begin to ponder that. But I think he's got uh, two goals tonight. One is clearly uh, what they're stating, which is to attract engineers, uh, people who work in the AI space. They want to be involved in the next best thing, in the next big thing. So why wouldn't I, as an engineer, want to go work for Tesla if they're going to create this mind-bending uh, supercomputer? And then, of course, you know, it's, it's 8 o'clock. Uh, uh, Washington time, New York time, uh, Tesla clearly has in mind uh, some free, uh, free media and uh, getting the attention of the movers and shakers on the East Coast. So how do you think today's event will compare to the autonomy day he held nearly two years ago? I think uh, there's two interesting connections. One is this is kind of the back end. So in other words, in uh, 2019, the big reveal was that Tesla was going to start making their own chips for the processing on board the cars of all of the data and information that was coming in from their cameras. Previously, they had used a supplier, NVIDIA, which is a global supplier of, of top-notch graphical, uh, graphical computing uh, uh, chips. And they replaced that with an in-house uh, project. And by the same token, this Dojo project, this supercomputer, would replace what Tesla has now, which is essentially a stack of NVIDIA chips all put together to create a kind of uh, a halfway station to Dojo. So I think there's that. And then, uh, of course, most of what people remember from 2019 is uh, Musk saying, well, in a, in a year, I'm going to have a million robo-Tesla taxis on the road. And of course, that was one of his grand overstatements. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, some, some grand statements that in a couple of years, we'll look back on and laugh at a bit. Now, amid the grand statements, you also have some of the concerns and the probes that are already underway in Tesla's autopilot. Tell us more about that and, and what we're seeing in terms of progress there. Right. Well, it's been very interesting with Tesla. Um, the news of the past week has been about the uh, NHTSA, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration in the United States, investigating, uh, I believe it's 17 crashes involving Teslas simply driving into the back end of emergency vehicles stopped on the road. And so these are vehicles with, you know, uh, uh, flashing red lights and reflective gear, and yet the Teslas hit them. So that's a very narrowly focused and, and sort of smartly focused investigation because if it can't, if the Tesla can't work there, where can it work? But in fact, Tesla's autopilot system has been investigated going back at least to 2016 in Germany. They, they told them you can't use the autopilot term anymore. And in 2017, we had the first autopilot crash in the United States. And that was investigated by the NTSB, an agency that, that normally investigates aircraft care, uh, crashes. And they were very critical, but they had no regulatory power. Whereas this week, NHTSA has regulatory power, and we could really see uh, something change. Now, I want to broaden this out to some other automakers. For example, Chinese automaker Li's recent call for clearer language about autonomous vehicles and some of the other big players that you're keeping an eye on in this space. Right. Well, in terms of uh, clear language, um, Tesla's absolutely egregious in this uh, space, but most of the other companies have come around to uh, the Society of Automotive Engineering uh, five levels of autonomy, actually six, you start at zero. 
Um, that's good, and, and I think uh, the people from Lee are, are uh, absolutely right. We should all be talking in those terms. But for consumers, that's not necessarily that helpful. What, what people really want to know is, when can I stop buying car insurance? When, when will the car maker uh, uh, take that over? Um, in terms of global leaders, technologically, it's hard to say. Everybody's kind of moving quickly and, and past each other and different claims. I think you really have to look at uh, the businesses that are um, going to be able to put this together and, and exploit it at scale. Uh, clearly, Baidu working with BAIC in China, uh, startups like Argo AI and Ford, uh, Cruise and General Motors, uh, those are the companies that uh, seem to be the closest. Uh, but then you also have to think about companies like uh, Amazon. Amazon right. has an enormous business case to make here.